G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Let's start this Everything Fibre playlist with where I got introduced to fibre. Now, fibre channel is a massive topic and we're gonna start out with the basics of fibre back in the 80s and we'll expand as we go through. For a long time, data was transmitted RF microwave the only way to get um, voice and data um, over massive distances. And back in the, I think, what was it, mid 80s, um, FDDI was introduced into the industry, Fiber Data Distributed Interface. Now, FDDI was a similar topology to a standard token ring, but you used to run dual rings, a primary and a redundant failover. Now, FDDI could be expanded up to about 200 kilometers, which was about 100 and 115, 120 miles, if my maths is right. So it was a fair distance. And obviously, if you had to go further, you had to put range extenders in and boosters, etc., etc., etc. Now, in um, towards the end of the eighties, FDDI uh, started to include voice and data transmissions as well in real time. Being fiber, it could. Um, it could go a long way without having to have be electrically boosted, such as obviously Ethernet. Now, and for a long time, FDDI was the fastest data transfer speed available for networking. We had ThinNet, uh, I think we had ThickNet and the beginnings of Token Ring. But FDDI could offer speeds up to 100 megabit over that 200 kilometer, 115, 120 mile distance. And it would be integrated into the existing LAN network from point A to point B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. From FDDI, we ended up expanding into everything else that comes with fiber channel. Now, let me explain from some notes that I've got here um, the standard topology for an FDDI interface. Now, Sun used FDDI for a long, long time. So did Cray. Both of them did. Um, I think IBM may have as well, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. But I know Cray did, and I know Sun did. And I've got a couple of FDDI cards from previous Sun servers out in the workshop. All right, so let me bring up my notes here for you. And, uh, okay, now, uh, FDDI is constructed in rings. As I said, it's very similar to a token ring network. And you have um, what they call a dual ring of trees. Now, I'm having to go from memory a lot of this as well as my notes. Now, my notes are way back when I was doing my course, so... How much this has changed or what, I don't know. And don't forget, my notes aren't exactly um, full of information. Now, you would have a small, quite a small number of devices, um, such as um, route points. All right, so you have a small number of devices that could be said to become routers, right? Um, and the other one would be a, um, what have I got there? Uh, I'm reading from scanned notes into the computer here. I think they called it concentrators. Now, routers and concentrators weren't the same as, say, a host computer, for example. It was a little bit different. Um, and then you had all that duly connected in a ring. Now, if you understand token ring networking, um, 
Think of a token ring as a ring. Okay? And in that ring of computers and switches and routers, because that's what they become, you have five. So you have five computers in a ring. And you want to get something from computer E. Computer E will just go straight to computer A. But if computer A wants to send something to computer E, it has to go right around the ring. So it starts here and finishes here. Probably there, actually. Okay? FDDI was set up in a similar way to that. All right? Now, FDDI um, had two um, fiber pins. So you had A and B. And the card would offer the... the um, Interface card had a AB two plugs. Okay. Um, now your host computer. Okay, so the host of the whole system connects um, as a single device to the router and the concentrator. Okay. And. Um, Uh, I'm trying to read my notes here, and my writing was so bad then. Uh, now, um, my, my, okay. Uh, you can put FDDI as a man, which is a metropolitan area network. Basically, to me, a man, a metropolitan area network, is halfway between a wide local area network and a small LAN. I mean, it may encompass a few buildings compared to an entire metropolitan area. That's my take on man. Now, whether that is the same take as you, I don't know. Now, FDDI requires this um, dual ring of trees uh, because it actually passes through every attached device to that ring. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Now, while token ring, right, standard, we we'll use our five computers again and you coax lead and you punched into the coax. With FDDI, you've got in and out. So you've got A, in, A B in, A B out. All right, that's why you often see, and I'm talking from a Sun point of view, Sun cards will have four ports on it, in, through, and out. Um, and for the actual FDDI system to run, Everything connected to that topology must be in run mode. It has to be operational. Otherwise, it's like hitting a brick wall. It just stops dead. And anything either side of it does not work. Now, FDDI um, later became uh, CDDI. Copper Data Distributed Interface, um, which then was turned into, um, I've lost myself here, uh, Twisted Pair Physical Medium uh, Dependent, uh, which then obviously became um, TPDDI, or Twisted Pair Data Distributed Interface, which again offered slightly higher speeds, but was in about the same ballpark as FDDI. Now, one of the one thing that FDDI did allow things to do was university supercomputers to talk to university supercomputers. For example, uh, you could have, say, Melbourne Uni. Now, Melbourne University is well-renowned uni here in Melbourne, and they've got a couple of campuses. And those campuses could be connected via FDDI within a 200 kilometer radius of the main campus. 
FDDI is still used today um, in certain aspects, but I'm not sure how much it is. Now, from FDDI, we um, we got more fiber advent, basically. It, it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, for a long time, right through the uh, early to mid-90s, FDDI was the fastest networking protocol we had. Because at the time, Ethernet was still running 10 meg, 10 base T. So for general computer to computer stuff, you could probably get away with 10 meg. But if you needed high speed file transfer and data transfer, it was FDDI. Campuses used it in universities, something fierce. Um, and most of your standard token ring networks, such as the IBM system, ran somewhere between, and it wasn't, it wasn't a standardized speed either. Now we look at networking today and you've got, you know, 10 base T, 100 base T, 1000 base T, now we've got 10,000 base T. Okay. Whereas token ring was, was, was like a binary number. It was between about, at the low end, I think it was, uh, what was it, 4 meg? And at the upper end was, what? Uh, 4 meg, 4, 8, 12, 16? I can't remember token ring. It, it's been so long since I've dealt with token ring, it's not funny, as my eyes will get full of sleep again. Okay. So, basically what we ended up having was you had standard computer-to-computer -computer stuff on a slower network, but for large file transfer and massive data storage, you would use fiber, distri fiber data distributed interface. That means you could get a large file and slam it through the network. Okay? So... By the, uh, I don't know, 1990-something, let's say mid-90s, so about, what, 1994 to 1996, I think it was. Um, I'm reading from my notes here. We had, uh, we had some pretty serious, um, networking companies uh, creating FDDI um, interfaces and management systems. Cisco were in there. Who else was in there? We had, oh, well, yeah, I should have seen that one straight away. National, National Semiconductors, um, and also um, Network Peripherals and Sysconnect, which were, which got swallowed up, strangely enough, by Marvel. So, that's where we had our high-speed networking for a long time and high-speed data transfer was with FDDI. Now, by, I think it was 1996, if my memory's right, FDDI became obsolete with the advent of fast Ethernet, 100 meg. Now, FDDI was not cheap. In fact, FDDI was very, very expensive. And anything fiber these days is expensive. And so you would, once fast ethernet came around, obviously with the price of copper, the price of cabling, the price of plugs, interface cards and everything, it was much cheaper to move away from FDDI to basically what we now know as your ordinary everyday run of the mill ethernet systems. Now, whilst ethernet, um, has a limited distance. It was really good for local area networks. Much better, much faster, and cheaper than FDDI. So there's a brief history on what FDDI was. Um, now, I, I, I don't think we used... 
if we are using FDDI these days, I don't think it's in the same vein as back in the 80s and early 90s as, as, as what we have now. Now, you've got to remember with now, with the advent of fibre, we've now got 128 gigabit fibre, which we will get to later on in this playlist. So there is a history on where fibre began back in FDDI days, as well as, strangely enough, for those who remember it, the old token ring days. All right, stick around. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the advent of fibre networking to help those get the basics of setting up a fibre LAN. And throughout this uh, playlist, we'll also talk about fibre sound systems, fibre layout topology, and using fibre channel to inter interconnect remote locations. Make sure you stick around for those. Until then, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.